let's go to the first question so can you please try to identify the tied structure what is the this is the sciatic nerve okay sciatic nerve has been tied okay so i hope you will be having the orientation this is the back of thigh okay back of thigh okay this is the gluteal region gluteal region okay so at the back of thigh we have the thickest nerve in the body the thickest nerve in the body that is sciatic nerve okay so related to the sciatic nerve the possible subcosins are okay origin otherwise you can say formation formation okay origin or formation then termination termination okay termination or what are the two terminal branches okay then mention any branches of the tied structure okay like that the question will be and sometimes root value root value of the tied structure okay root value of tied structure fine so let's discuss about this subcosins actually this is again the sciatic nerve only tied here okay somewhat magnified view okay this is the back of thigh okay so i want you to know here just behind the knee joint okay just behind the knee joint we have the popliteal fossa diamond shaped depression called as popliteal fossa isn't it so when the sciatic nerve is moving downwards what happens at the superior angle of the popliteal fossa yes the sciatic nerve at the superior angle of the popliteal fossa divides into two terminal branches are you able to see one nerve is moving vertically downwards one nerve is moving almost vertically downwards which branch of the which terminal branch of sciatic nerve i am talking about yes tibial nerve isn't it and do you see another terminal branch of the sciatic nerve which is moving downwards and laterally downwards and laterally which nerve is that one yes this is the another terminal branch of sciatic nerve namely common peroneal nerve fine so actually this is the lower limb of left side okay why i am saying this one is left side okay this is the lateral aspect this is the medial aspect of the lower limb thigh okay fine so make it clear what are the two terminal branches of the sciatic nerve yes one is tibial nerve another one is common peroneal nerve why i am saying uh, this one because sometimes sometimes other than sciatic nerve they may pin the tibial nerve or they may they may tie the tibial nerve or sometimes they may tie the common peroneal nerve okay so make sure you are able to identify whether the tied structure is sciatic nerve or tibial nerve or common peroneal nerve okay yes let's talk about the subcosins for the sciatic nerve okay formation or origin of the sciatic nerve you know it is formed by the union of two nerves okay within the pelvic cavity tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve okay and remember the root value of the tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve tibial nerve root value is l4 l5 s1 s2 s3 l4 to s3 the common peroneal nerve root value is l4 l5 s1 s2 that is l4 to s2 okay so if the sciatic nerve root value is asked what will be the answer l4 to s3 okay l4 l5 s1 s2 s3 l4 to s3 fine and you will be knowing already it is the thickest nerve in the body it is the largest branch of sacral plexus sciatic nerve is the thickest nerve in the body and it is the largest branch of sacral plexus okay so you are clear about the formation of the sciatic nerve root value of the sciatic nerve isn't it now coming to the another subcosin for the sciatic nerve that is termination okay termination otherwise what are the two terminal branches of sciatic nerve okay in idea yes i told you already at the superior angle of popliteal fossa fine at the superior angle of popliteal fossa okay sciatic nerve divides into what what are the two terminal branches of sciatic nerve yes sciatic nerve divides into tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve okay root value of tibial nerve is l4 to s3 
and the common peroneal nerve root value is L4 to S2. L4 to S2. Okay. Fine. So the level is superior angle of popliteal fossa. Fine. And I told you how to identify whether it is tibial nerve or common peroneal nerve. Tibial nerve moves vertically downwards within the popliteal fossa and then into the back of leg. Back of leg. Okay. Common peroneal nerve moves downwards and laterally. Laterally, isn't it? Now, another sub question for the sciatic nerve is mentioned branches of the tide structure. So, already you know, sciatic nerve is the nerve of back of leg. So, it supplies all the hamstring muscles. Okay. You are seeing here the back of thigh. Okay. So, it, sorry, it is the nerve of back of thigh. So, all the hamstring muscles, all the hamstring muscles, that means the muscles of the back of thigh, thigh, or sub back of thigh, are supplied by sciatic nerve. Okay. Actually, sciatic nerve is labeled here. Okay. This is the, this green color is the tibial part of sciatic nerve. Okay. In this diagram, this is medial side, this lateral side. And the yellow color structure is common peroneal, okay, common peroneal part of sciatic nerve. Okay. So, the semitendinosus semi-membranosus, then long head of biceps femoris, hamstring part of adductor magnus. All these four hamstring muscles are supplied by sciatic nerve. Specifically, which part of sciatic nerve? Yes, tibial part of sciatic nerve. Okay, fine. What about the common peroneal part of sciatic nerve? It supplies only one small muscle at the back of thigh called as short head of biceps femoris. Okay. So when the branches of sciatic nerve is asked, you can write all the four hamstring muscles, name, name of all the four hamstring muscles supplied by the tibial part of sciatic nerve. Fine. Yes. Now coming to the okay, this is what I have told you just now. Okay. The tibial part of sciatic nerve supplies all the ham, four hamstring muscles. Common peroneal part of sciatic nerve supplies short head of biceps femoris at the superior angle of popliteal fossa. The sciatic nerve divides into tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve. For this diagram, this is the medial side, this is the lateral side. Okay, fine. Yes. Now, I told you already, other than uh, sciatic nerve, sometimes tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve, they may also be tied in the spotters. Okay. Again, the sub will be uh, similar to the sciatic nerve. Here also, sub will be formation termination, root value, branches, okay, root value, branches, any one may be a sub -cousin. okay, any one or two may be a sub -cousin. So, let's talk about the subtopics for the tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve, okay. Already I have told you the formation of the tibial nerve, common peroneal nerve. The termination of sciatic nerve is the formation of the tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve, okay. So, when you talk about tibial nerve, it is one of the two terminal branches of sciatic nerve at the level of superior angle of popliteal fossa. Okay. At the level of superior angle of popliteal fossa. And then I told you how to identify the uh, how to identify the tibial nerve. Isn't it? How? It moves vertically downwards. As you see in this diagram, it moves vertically downwards to enter into the back of leg. Okay. And it will supply all the muscles of back of leg. Okay. So tibial nerve root value, you know, it is the larger terminal branch of sciatic nerve. It enters the back of leg. So all the muscles of back of leg, back of leg, that is flexor compartment of leg, the three superficial muscles and the four deep muscles, all are supplied by tibial nerve only, right? Okay. So you know the three superficial muscles of back of leg, gastrocnemius, soleus, plantaris, and the four deep muscles of back of leg are Flexor halysis longus, flexor digitorum longus, tibialis posterior, and popliteus. Fine. So, what about the termination of the of the tibial nerve? Okay. Beneath beneath the flexor retinaculum of ankle joint, tibial nerve divides into two terminal branches, which will supply the sole or plantar surface of the foot. So, what will be the name of the two terminal branches of tibial nerve? medial and lateral plantar nerves okay so tibial nerve termination is beneath the flexor retinaculum of ankle joint it terminates into tibial nerve and the common sorry tibial nerve divides into medial and lateral plantar nerves 
to supply the soul of the food right so somewhere here you will find the flexor retinaculum okay so deep to the flexor retinaculum fine deep to the flexor retinaculum it will divide, divide into medial and lateral plantar nerves fine yes let's talk about the common peroneal nerve okay for the common peroneal nerve okay already you know the formation okay but it is the smaller terminal branch or it is one of the two terminal branches of sciatic nerve at the level of superior angle of popliteal fossa okay and as you see in this diagram what about the termination of common peroneal nerve already i told you common peroneal nerve runs downwards and laterally downwards and laterally isn't it and at the level of neck of fibula very very important point at the level of neck of fibula bone common peroneal nerve divides into superficial peroneal nerve and deep peroneal nerve common peroneal nerve terminates by dividing into superficial peroneal nerve and deep peroneal nerve okay i hope you will be knowing this thing superficial peroneal nerve is the nerve of lateral compartment of leg deep peroneal nerve is the nerve of extensor compartment of leg that is front of leg extensor compartment so whatever muscles present in the particular compartment of leg will be supplied by the particular nerve of the compartment fine right? tibial nerve is the nerve of back of leg flexor compartment of leg okay fine so i hope you are clear about the uh, subcosin answer for the subcosin of common peroneal nerve okay uh, you know the formation you know the termination and the two terminal branches of the common peroneal nerve fine and uh, you know the another subcosin may be applied aspect for the common peroneal nerve okay any idea about the common peroneal nerve applied aspect yes if there is fracture of neck of fibula you know neck of fibula is the level of termination of common peroneal nerve into superficial peroneal nerve and deep peroneal nerve isn't it so if there is fracture of neck of fibula fracture of neck of fibula what will happen the common peroneal nerve will get injured so okay the deformity which is due to the common peroneal nerve injury is called as foot drop so foot drop is due to injury to the common peroneal nerve usually at the level of termination of common peroneal nerve what is the level of termination of common peroneal nerve yes neck of fibula okay so i humbly request you to go through this um, points related to the superficial peroneal nerve and deep peroneal nerve okay so common peroneal nerve is a possible short notes sciatic nerve is a possible sa question even okay sometimes in sa also sciatic nerve may be asked common peroneal nerve is a possible short notes then you have to talk about the superficial and deep peroneal nerves whatever we have mentioned here fine right? yes now now coming to the next sub question till now we have talked about the sciatic nerve tibial nerve and common peroneal nerve okay the three possible spotter questions and the remaining we are going to discuss in the current session is hamstring muscles okay hamstring muscles okay so can you try to identify the muscle hamstring muscle which is pinned here so this is again back of thigh back of thigh so the muscles of back of thigh flexor compartment of thigh will be called as hamstring muscles okay so all the hamstring muscles they have common origin from the ischial tuberosity ischial tuberosity fine so after origin are you able to see one muscle is moving downwards and and towards medial side so in this diagram for this specimen this is medial side this is lateral side okay because this is the left lower limb left lower limb and you are seeing the back of thigh okay so are you able to see one muscle is moving downwards and medially medially okay this muscle so the pinned muscle is or pinned structure is semi tendinosus okay semi tendinosus okay how will you identify the muscle the lower half of the muscle will be will be tendon like tendinous tendinous okay so that's why you can easily identify the semi tendinosus so the muscle is moving running downwards and medially downwards and medially okay that is one identification point for semi tendinosus okay and now can you try to identify the muscle pinned here this muscle is also moving downwards and medially only downwards and medially only but which lies this muscle lies 
just deep to the semitendinosus actually semitendinosus has been reflected okay laterally in order to expose the muscle pinned here which muscle is this one yes this is the semi membranosus muscle okay so the muscle pinned here is semi membranosus semi membranosus okay are you able to see upper half of the muscle is membrane like it is membrane like glistening like membrane okay so semi membranosus and in case if the this, this muscle is okay if this muscle is pinned any idea about the muscle do you see the muscle after arising from the ischial tuberosity this muscle is moving downwards and laterally laterally which muscle i am talking about which hamstring muscle yes biceps femoris biceps femoris okay if you want to say specifically this is the long head long head of biceps femoris fine so among the various hamstring muscles any one may be may be pinned okay in askrim spotter semi tendinosus okay this one then semi membranosus okay and biceps femoris okay biceps femoris any one among these three hamstring muscles may be pinned okay so the subcosine will be attachments that is origin insertion nerve supply action any may anything may be a subcosine for any of these three hamstring muscles okay so uh, you can see this tabular column okay almost we are at the end of the session so you can see the four hamstring muscles their origin insertion nerve supply and action okay so for spotter's purpose i am going to talk about these three muscles only okay the three possible spotter's question related to the hamstring muscles origin just to remember all the hamstring muscles what is the site of origin yes it means what ischial tuberosity okay ischial tuberosity is the site of origin of all the hamstring muscles okay fine what about the insertion yes you know already semi tendinosus semi membranosus both are moving downwards and medially isn't it so they will get inserted into which leg bone tibia both will get inserted into the tibia isn't it fine so uh, semi tendinosus gets inserted into the upper part of medial surface of tibia okay whereas semi membranosus is also getting inserted into tibia only okay posterior surface of okay posterior surface of tibia upper end of tibia otherwise you can say posterior surface of medial condyle of tibia okay fine what about biceps femoris yes biceps femoris after arising from ischial tuberosity it is moving downwards and laterally so it will get inserted into which leg bone fibula which part of the fibula head of fibula head of fibula fine then nerve supply and action will be common for all these three hamstring muscles okay tibial part of sciatic nerve okay and what about the action of the hamstring muscles common action for all the hamstring muscles will be yes flexion of knee joint or flexion of thigh at knee joint okay flexion of knee joint or flexion of thigh at knee joint that's why this compartment back of thigh is called as flexor compartment of thigh because all these muscles are involved in flexion of knee joint knee joint fine yes so if you see this diagram you can understand the attachments of the three hamstring muscles we have discussed just now semi tendinosus semi membranosus long head of biceps femoris origin is from ischial tuberosity insertion i told you long head head of biceps femoris is getting inserted into head of fibula isn't it what about the semi tendinosus yes upper part of medial surface of tibia what about the semi membranosus yes it is getting inserted into tibia only posterior surface of the medial condyle of tibia yes okay yes that's the end of the part 2 spotter session thank you all